Hello, everyone. So today I have with me Dr. Daniel Kubewa. And in this special session, we are going to talk about how to write and prepare a successful research proposal. You are wondering why is a research proposal important for those who are looking to enter into grad schools? Sometimes universities require you to actually write a research proposal to get admissions and scholarships. Some schools like um, in Australia and also in the UK. And also for people who have graduated with a lower, writing a research proposal is also a plus because it also shows your research capacity and abilities. And I think that Dr. Daniel Kubawa is one of the best person to help us in the session. So before we start, I'm going to allow him to introduce himself and you will also agree with me why you think he's well equipped to help us in this session. So Dr. Daniel Kubewa, I hope I'm pronouncing your name well. Um, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, good evening, Baba. Thank you very much to invite me to share the small experience I got writing a research proposal. Uh, as I said, uh, she said, my name is uh, Daniel Kubewa, PhD. Uh, I got my PhD from the University of KwaZulu-Natal and my master's for the same university. I'm currently from I'm, I'm originated from DRC Congo. Now I'm in, at the University of Sherbrooke where I'm doing my postdoc uh, fellow uh, in the Department of Civil Engineering. Uh, so I'll share a small experiences uh, which I had uh, write twice the research proposal uh, from my master's study. And when I was about to start my PhD, I write this research proposal. And what make it uh, very complex is uh, from my PhD study, we had to write a research proposal so that we can get in the funders for the project as well. So that makes it important. Um, that's a bit of experience. But beside that, uh, when I start my, my, uh, my postdoc here, I had to write a lot of uh, executive or executive uh, proposal, business proposal to many partners uh, in order to get funding. So it's a bit of tricky. Sometimes small details can play a big difference in writing a research proposal. It can be a research proposal, business proposal. All of them have the same means in order to get what you are looking for. OK. Um, so thank you very much for agreeing to grace this session. So without a lot of conversation, let's get right into it. Thank you very much. Um, as I say, uh, the title is Outright Research Proposal. So in this uh, document, we share a bit of, uh, I think, 20 slides of what what is the, the path to take in order to get a good research proposal, a concise one without uh, taking a long uh, stop in in beginning be, before we starting talking about the research proposal we need to know why are we writing the research proposal for uh, a research proposal in fact is a is a document we will def we will uh, give a definition as we go before that we need to define what is the a scientific research? Because a research proposal we are talking about today is about when someone wants to undertake a master's or a PhD. They will ask you, most of the university around the world, they ask a student to write a research proposal. And in order to, to start from there, we will define the, what is a scientific research. A scientific research is a um, focus on resolving problems is the way of finding solution in many domains and the way of finding solution is not like you find solution like you find a mathematical solution there is some procedural there is some ethical and there is some uh, way of uh, doing the research uh, the sun the the research when you want to find a solution. Most of the people think that when you have a lot of experiences, when you work a, a places for many years, you can do a research. Or when you 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 anxious, you have anxious uh, is research is based on anxious. Is not that the research uh, 
call two main foundation of the research um, skills is to be very uh, purposive and rigorous when you undertake the research, a scientific research. And what is the hallmarks of a, research, a scientific research? As I was saying that the, a research uh, must never be arbitrary or random. And when you under, under, undertake your research, it must be very accurate and exhaustive. A, if, for instance, you undertake a, a scientific research, I'm doing it in South Africa, I'm doing it in, here in Canada or in Brazil, someone else if is uh, getting the same um, data, the same uh, test bench or the same environment, it can do the same research. That is the fourth point, like repeatability or replicability. It means like someone here in Canada having the research, uh, the scientific research can replicate or duplicate or um, do the, can repeat, repeating the same experimentation as to get at least uh, almost the same results. And the another specification characteristic of a, a scientific research must be precise, a precision. So why do you say precision? We need to have imagine. For instance, if they did a research in France, the same uh, input in the same condition, they need to get the, the, the at least uh, the same output in some it, uh, within some margin of output. And the research need to be objective. It means we when you undertake a research, you need to go straight to the point and is able to do the generalization. And the generalization is where, for instance, you have a representative samples. If, for instance, I want to have conclusion, to conclude my research, I need to have samples which are representative. From those sample results, I'm able to do the generalization of a fact which I have to establish. And another quality of a research, a scientific research, it must be use optimum results it can be funding it can be human skills it must be at optimum point and now what is important is to know the step of a scientific research because to know the the, the step of scientific research gonna allow you to know what are you doing or what are you looking for and there is four men step of the scientific research which is the first one is first of all to ad identify the the variables when you want to undertake a research you need to know what are you dealing with this is the first step and the second step is you need to do the planning of your experiment when you do the planning of experiments there is uh, a saying that 80% of planning and 20% of execution. That is when you're doing the right planning of how you're going to undertake your experiments, how you're going to get your data, then everything's going to be simple. And the third uh, part is the observation and, and uh, collection of your data. In that point, you need, when you do the observation, whatsoever you observe is unusual you need to write it down because sometimes the data can not give you the expected result. It can be uh, impacted by the phenomenon or the observation you made. It can be a temperature. It can be whatsoever environmental um, um, point out uh, or data who can pop in. And the fourth point is the discussion and conclusion. You need to do the interpretation of what you have and we have now to define uh, what is the research proposal what is the research proposal i give you this uh, funny uh, you have a donkey which the donkey sometimes is a very uh, stubborn animal so what they do in order for him to be motivated they give him they put a carrot 
on a tree whose it is fixed. So when he is running, for him, he thinks that he's going to meet the, he's going to have the carrot, he's going to eat the carrot. Then that is the big motivation he got. And the second uh, drawing, you have uh, a man, which I believe is our supervisor most of the time. And the, the guy uh, down there in the four legs is, uh, is uh, in fact, crawling, is a student. So I want to define now the research proposal. A research proposal is a document which predicts what's going to happen, where I'm going. Because when you want to do even if a business proposal, you need to do a document which is going to bring investors down to accept the funding you're asking for. It's the same thing. A research proposal in a scientific world is a document which predicts, which gives um, the overview of what you are looking for, what, which means you're going to be using, and where you think you're going to arrive, and putting limitation of what you have in hand. That is the most important. If I draw this, is to show that when you're writing a research proposal, you give yourself a motivation to see where you're going and where you want to reach. Sometimes you have a, you are blinded to know where you are reach, you are going, but you must just have a motivation. Say I'm going some point and I'll reach some point. And what is the research proposal? A proposal, um, a research proposal has three main points. And this treatment point, you need to ask three questions. What will be done? How it will be done? And why it should be done? What will be done means like you need, first of all, to identify what is your variables in order to know what you are looking for. And by how it will be done is what means you have, what resources you got, what environment are you going to use, and what is the application of it, why is how it's applied and why it should be done. What is the funding is going to be used for? For instance, are you doing for which people? For instance, when you, 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 you're working on water, you know, for instance, you want to do a research how to purify water. You know that you are doing for people to drink because water is life, how we say. And what will be done? For instance, you need to remove stone in the water. It's what will be done is to remove stone in the water. How will be done? It's how you're going to use which machine. For instance, you're going to be using um, whatever you're going to be using in order to reach your objective. And now, what is most important is to know how the format will be uh, the format of research proposal. I know that a lot of university have uh, suggest uh, su su have given suggestion of the format to be used uh, in different um, research proposal. Like at the University of KwaZulu Natal, where I was, um, the the research proposal, I, I web, the research the research proposal in the department of. Uh, um, civil engineering or engineering was different with the research proposal uh, format of uh, um, others humanity sciences ag agricultural sciences was very different each faculty or department or school have its own requirement of research proposal but the, there is some general format although you're doing in business although you're doing in uh, in research, in scientific research or research, the format, the general format are almost the same. The first point you need to know is to have a title. You need to tell us a title in a simple way, but a title which uh, attracts people. There is some title <laughs> when you read them, they, they do not attract people. Because remember, when you do a research proposal, you need to, to impress. The first impression is the one that counts. Because those are going to read your work and to be attracted by your work. If you put a title who's attract people, going to have that 
they're gonna be thirsty of going deeper in reading your work but if you put a boring title people are gonna be tired even if they they um before uh, something i didn't point out besides um having this experience i'm sharing with you i'm being a reviewer for many main journal uh, platform for many years like i i've been uh, since 2018 i've been uh, a, a reviewer and sometimes papers have been rejected because of the title by just seeing the title you're very bored and so on so that the title needs to give a specific specific summary of what you want to do as research that is the first point the second point is a abstract okay most of the time uh, they give you you see they can tell you uh, the abstract must not be uh, more than 500 words and you need to take account to that and sometimes they're gonna ask you 1000 words which is one page they're gonna ask one page to write an abstract what is the abstract the abstract is a brief um, description of what you want to achieve in the abstract there is hypothesis there is the goal there is the way the experiment the ex experiment have been uh, gonna be done or you are projecting to be to do it because it's still a proposal and as well as the question you asking the question you need to answer remember the great part of a research proposal is to find solution to the problem and the best way to do it is to ask a questions and those questions or one question is the one you are, want to achieve to answer so I'll, that this is the research uh, the abstracts as well is the map road of what being to be achieved and this need to show as well it need to attract the reader or the reviewer more and more so each step of your research proposal need to make the reviewer more tasty and more tastier to go further in deeper to your work that is how uh, the research proposal is, is done and after being uh, doing the abstract, you need now to introduce your work. And most of the time, the format, in general format, they request you to have a introduction combined with the literature review. And when you combine that, what is most important as well, you need to put some reference in your literature review. So when you're doing a introduction and literature review, what is the benefit of that? You need to present the gap between what has been done and what still to be uh, done. So what does it mean? It means in your introduction, you need to speak about what has been done by previous researcher. What is the problem still remain today? And what are you proposing to do? So there is two ways. What have been done? What, what have been done? What you want to, to achieve? What is the gap? What's uh, still uh, in the gap? And what you proposing to do? So that is the, the, the three uh, words or the three parts need to be in your, your introduction and your literature review. And most important as well is the research uh, hypothesis. Why is the most important? Because there you asking question of how things gonna be done, how you gonna draw the guideline, what is the hypothesis that you are testing, what you are seeking to achieve, based on this, what you know, what you hope to obtain, what the result you know. Remember, when I defined the research proposal, I put a donkey with a carrot so that is this part where you intervene so you can you don't have the answer but you 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 feel the answer let me put that way you feel the answer you where you're gonna go with the answer where you where you're gonna find the answer what time you're gonna have the answer that's why for instance when you start the five the fifth point um, material and method 
there is a part where you need to put your timeline which is the most important part because the professor the reviewer is gonna read he, he want to see what is your capability for instance is your, your cv when you undertake your cv in your cv you 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 treat to yourself flowers you say okay my work i'll start in january i'll finish but before that you need to define the material and methodology because methodology are very important even in methodology you can have a, a research where you have to compare methodology for instance you have a previous researcher they did uh, method a b c and the second did method z and so you can combine the methods and compare the work you can do a research like that but now in this part you need to tell us what sample are you using what methodology are you using are you gonna doing uh, numerical analysis analytical analysis combined analytical numerical and experimental when is about experimental you need to define which equipment are you be using what resources you have in hand what you can even if add the budget what is the budget you request for instance if they have to buy equipment if they have to buy um, samples which sample are you, you you need and regarding the methodology for instance if using the numerical methodology which means like you're gonna do kind of simulation you need to tell us which software you're gonna be using why are you using those software why are you using this methodology because the method you are using gonna determine how far you can go with your research some methods can have a limitation and those limitation those limitations you can always um all those limitations you can always bring them up when you are doing the uh, methodology is the most important part but but all the time you have limit don't be too excessive who don't present everything in details so all the time as we say objectivity so go straight to the point and be concise but accurate but in such a way people when they are reading you they understand but when you will see uh what is the tip to do a better uh, research uh research proposal i will give you some tip how to make it to become to look very good and to to make a, a range a wide range of many people to to understand what you are writing remember when you are doing a research you are not doing it for yourself you are doing for other to understand what is your discovery that is the most important things and what is the pro in 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 the five points we did uh, we spoke about the methodology and material but in order to complete that you need to give the project timeline and the project timeline is very important why because you give idea when for instance when you gonna do the research review when you're gonna uh, do the experimental part so you 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 have to give the timeline because for instance if the project gets funded and the funders are expecting for answers for solution in order to have to overcome a problem in their uh, industry they need to know when are you finishing so that the results you got they can apply to the companies they can um, in, uh, improve their production so you need to give the timeline of your project is most important and here i give the example i show the example of what you call the grand chart of uh, a research proposal whereby you have a table with the main task and the tax you give the timeline according to the month uh, the year month for instance in some university for instance the masters is a year so you need to do the grand chart a year grand chart whereby you describe how you're gonna perform how you're gonna do the the work is most important and the main task and the time to be accomplished and after you finish with the the time project timeline the work needs to have a conclusion and you need to justify why you undertake the project so but what is the most important the best the best 
even if when you'll be writing a research paper, when you did a very good literature review part, it's easy to do the conclusion because in the conclusion, now you need to draw the line of your findings, what have been accomplished, you need to draw the line. And when you did a very good uh, literature review, you aren't going to have any problem because at the time you're going to have that what you're going to do the observation uh, you're going to have as data and result it's going to help you to draw the line and remember i say you need as well to add a, a, a bibliography a reference to your work and there is a lot of um, according to the university some university or some uh, department has their own way of do the referencing there is the ieee uh, type or ieee um, reference methods there is APA, there is Vancouver. So it depends the university you are from. And uh, there is a lot of guidelines. But now, as I was saying, I want to share now with you what is the tip to do a good writing a research proposal. So first of all, you need to follow the instruction of your university. Each university got their own instruction how to write the research proposal. They give you the main point. They give you the words. For instance, when many medical school, they, they have what they call many, uh, not only medical school. I saw, I, I, I saw even if uh, in uh, psychology or other medical sciences school, they got the, what they call the ethical clearance. The ethical clearance, for instance, you have to do research where you need to disclose some cases so before you 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 uh, undertake the research proposal or you can do the research proposal but you need to go through the ethical clearance sometimes uh, when you're doing chemistry engineering or chemistry research you have to handle some toxic products or acidic products as a uh, product you need um you need to have authorization clearance, safety clearance, or ethical clearance is very important in order to undertake your work. And sometimes it takes long because most of the ethical clearance uh, committee, uh, they meet sometimes once a year. Uh, I remember like in South Africa, KwaZulu Natal, those who are doing research in medical school, they need to suffer because the, the ethical clearance committee used to meet once a year. So they had to wait until they have approval of their proposal. So before the, the, the reviewer can read, before they accept your topic, you need to go through the committee and sometimes take point. So, so that's why the first tip is you need strictly follow the, the instruction of the university department and you find any uh, university in the world or all university got their own um, guideline of how to um, write the research proposal. Most of the time, the big title or aiding are there. The main aiding are there. You need just to complete in between the aiding. Uh, it's uh, the, the first tip. The second, before writing your first draft, break down your proposal points. So you need to have your own point, what you want to talk about. And I saw you, I, I told you that most of the time you can have question. You, the main point can be the question. And after that, you can replace to introduction the background material methodology and and so on the third tip is to reach your target audience i told you is most important when you are describing doing your research proposal use as much as possible non-technical -te term but what i always advise uh, all uh, scientists when you want to undertake a research proposal each and every uh, um, re research field got the lexic. Lexic uh, is the the common uh, uh, use word in your field. For instance, in mechanical engineering, there is some lexic they are using. So it's important as well for um, language purposes. For instance, um, you cannot going to China. You start speaking French. So you can speak French. There's some people going to understand, but not all of them. 
in order to make your 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 your, your staying in China easy, you need, for instance, to to learn Mandarin, so that when you reach there, you can speak and it's easier for you. It's the same way if you want to reach your audience, because remember, when you are writing, you are doing research. You are not doing for yourself. You are doing for others to understand what is your discovery, and then. When you're writing, this is the most important part. That's why I'm taking um, uh, this thing. When you're writing, try to use more technical, describe the non-technical terms, but use as well the need technical term. You know, uh, for instance, if you you have to say screwdriver, say screwdriver. Not you want to say screwdriver. No, uh, the, uh, the, the, the 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 screw. Or open up something like that. You go straight to the point on that. What you need to avoid is to avoid the careless word like the the, the jargon. Sometimes when you're writing, I remember when I start writing, I use because I'm a French speaking. My first language was French. When I moved to South Africa, I start writing my proposal. I use you know those words like you know to impress you know. Not to impress with my knowledge, but I want to impress with my language. And someone advised me, no, be simple, straight to the point. Because you need to use simple language. The language that anyone around the world can understand. If someone, uh, English is not his first language, he can understand. And the third point here, you need to check errors and uh, uh, typographical errors and grammatical errors. It's most important. Most of the time, we reject publication. I'm take, talking because paper is most general. When we reject people, uh, papers, sometimes it's very boring and frustrating when you're reading a paper with a lot of mistake. There is some people, when they're writing, they're writing with a lot of mistake, but they make sometimes, uh, they, they make... Uh, the reviewer uh, get out of himself and is bored of reading your paper. Remember, when you're writing, it must be in a way where each paragraph or each sentence push the reviewer to go to the next one. That is the purpose of writing a best uh, research proposal. And make sure that there is no a lot of uh, typographical or grammatical error. Most of the time, if you have a language problem, if English is not your first language, even if English is your first language, give to someone else to read your work. Someone else to read your work and to which gonna help you to um, to 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 suppress or to reduce the number of errors. If there is a lot of errors, um, it's, it's make very frustrating reading that. And the last point is uh, uh, in this uh, reaching your target audience is what we call the KIS principle. Keep it simple. So that's how critics like it. So keep it simple, straight to the point, in order to make people to understand just by reading once. Not when people come twice the time, uh, you, <laughs> you, you, you're writing parable. And the fourth point is uh, make it a strong first impression. As I told you, the impression is not in the way you using the very good English, but the way you you you, add, you sequence your work. Reviewer have a lot in their plate. They don't have only your work. Most of the time, they have plenty paper, plenty work to read. So if, for instance you don't give the first impression is very boring the first line uh they will reject it i'm telling you they reject it so you must uh capture the intention of the reviewer so use something who's gonna attract him more and more he's reading the first sentence he pushing to read the second the third and so on and so on and you as well what is most important when you're doing a research what i always say i can take we can take the same title, me and you guys, but you're gonna have different, different way of understanding. But it's up to you to make your work 
unique in it, on its own. It means what? When people are reading, you make them dream more to say, ah, this work is going to be a blast, you know? That's how we need to push them. And when you, it must be well organized, your proposal must be well organized and well integrated, going focused to the central question. Most of the time, um, as researcher, we, we, we have the tendency of um, running to many objectives at the same time. But I know at the beginning, you'll be like that. But try to have a central question. What is the central question? What do you want to achieve? Because this world is too big for yourself. To to yourself. You aren't going to do all the research by yourself. You need to leave other people. I know that when you will be start reading your work, when you do some experimental work, you'll see that there is a lot to do in the field. Or maybe the same, you had the same question, same topic you are working on there will be a lot of a lot of uh, opening that's why when you're doing a research they will tell you uh, you need to consider past work from previous researcher present work is what you're doing and you need to open doors for future researcher so when you do your conclusion at the end you need to tell no when we are doing experiment we notice that for instance there is this uh, this observation we open the door for those who are going to come after us to undertake this path. That is the way to do research, always thinking about the future generation. And uh, the, the fifth, uh, the fourth, fifth, uh, the fourth uh, tip is still continuing, but it depends on the discipline, but you need to have a clear hypothesis or research and the term of important problem to solve the fascinating question by answering is often the best way to achieve the, a tight proposal. It means like when you have a clear hypothesis, you have a clear objective. That is the best way to achieve the tight proposal. Don't have a lot of in your plate. Have a fascinating question. Answer it very well. Answer it very well, but the right proposal, right objective, and right goal you want to achieve. And at the end, we have the, the, the fifth is have a distinct title. So the title must be on is your. It must be very specific. We did we did say, and uh, it must uh, give the reader interest. I told you sometimes when we go into the library or uh, to buy a book what we check for the title. For instance, if you like a action movie, by seeing the title, it's going to attract you to buy the book and to go more. So you read the title. When the title is interesting you, is very interested, or you go to the next part, which you can go uh, under, the, the, under the, the other cover, back cover, you see the abstract, the resume, or the summary. And from the summary as well, the summary is going to push you to go inside to the book. That is the most important. And the most important as well is uh, you need to emphasize if you the, the work you are doing is going to um, you're gonna go through many uh, discipline aspects. Like, for instance, you are working in uh, mechanical, you register in mechanical, your field is mechanical. But you work, you need to have uh, some electrical motor and so on. So you need to emphasize them. And what are you going to do for each part? How they are linked together? It's the most important things. And as well as sometimes when, if for instance, your research proposal, you're going to do it by paper publication. Sometimes you need to draw it. You need to say, I write a paper publication. I write a a, a an article one two three four five you need to emphasize this as well it's how we're going to discuss with uh, the main supervisor and most of the time you need to demonstrate that your research is feasible so how you do that you need to produce um that there is you have you're going to have enough resources within the budget for instance and according to the timeline you draw 
So you need to be to demonstrate that is feasible your research. As well as as I say, states if your research or scholarship will be contributed to your knowledge or address to important question. Sometimes uh, we can minimize uh, the importance of the research we are doing, but it's you, it's us to emphasize what we'll be doing, how important it's gonna be for the society, it's gonna be for those who need water, gonna be important for the, the country, gonna be important for what we, we're doing. For instance, uh, I will present it in the the next, uh, the second uh, uh, slides, example of my PhD proposal. I, I did some work uh, for an American company called Electrical Power Research Institute. So we uh, develop a software how to optimize uh, uh, power lines. But we did it in South Africa. So for me, um, I, I had to, to clearly uh, specify that the experimental work we're going to be doing going to help South Africa transmission line. So that's how you need to do. So you need to, to, to make sure you address this question that what I will be doing going to uh, benefit uh, this area, this population, this field. So it's a contribution you're making. That is the most important. And that is uh, which I always like the nine, the, the tip number nine is having others to always read. And when I, I remember when I, I start, I arrived to South Africa, I started doing my master's. I wrote my proposal and I had a good, a, a good man who was always there for us to read the proposal. He had a French back, background because I had a French background. I just switched to English, finished my engineering. I went to South Africa. So it was not even if uh, from my field, but it's good when you have a lot of people reading the work. And among those people, there is some people who is not from your field. Why? Because when they can have, the, uh, they can understand your work, everyone else can understand your work. You're going to inspire some. And uh, it's most, uh, it's very important. And the last point, you need to keep in mind that nothing is set on the stone. As I was telling you, when you do your research proposal, it's not a, a binding, like by law uh, document. So you can be flexible, you can change it. But remember, the research proposal is going to be the basic. When you finish to write your research proposal, after some time, when they accept you the, at the university, you have to start writing your your progress report. After some time, they'll ask you, write a, a progress report. You're going to have a basic. Your, your, your foundation is a research proposal. Each and every time you're going to add, you can come and add, complete, extend it, extend, extend. The uh, Like, for instance, the, the abstracts can change, but the introduction can be the foundation. Each time you're going to use that as your reference, as your guideline, as your roadmap, in order to achieve um, a research proposal. And this one now, I'll be sharing the my research proposal, which I did for my master's. Uh, the title is, um, I did, as I told you, I did some work. Um, Daniel, thank you very much. Can I ask you questions as you are discussing this, or you want me to wait, then when you are done, you could, no, I could ask my it's question. Fine. It's fine, you can ask questions. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so that's when you start, like I'll ask as you are progressing. You want me to start with... Yeah, yeah like continuous, topic. like as you are discussing, I'll yes. ask my questions. Okay. Then uh, the, the topic of my, my PhD was uh, is was uh, experimental and numerical study of Aeolian vibration of bundle conductor. For instance, let me explain you briefly. So when we have a power line conductor, the power line conductors, the outside environment allow that when there's the winds blow on the conductor, the conductor start vibrating. When it start vibrating, there is um, some stress are creating at, at the attachment point, which gonna create the conductor to break and fall within some point, some time. Remember when the design transmission line, the designer wants the transmission line to stay on the pylon 
for more than uh, 25 years. That is the year, uh, according to some study, where the investors gonna recover the the money. They call a return of investment. Now, in this project is about finding a way to do the modeling, to model the transmission line which are undergoing through our alien vibration. And you see the title is straight to the point. We have experimental and numerical study. It means we're going to have two parts. We're going to have experimental, then numerical study of alien vibration of bundle conductors. And the first part, as I say, this is an example. I think um, Barbara is going to share you the document so that you're going to have a, a support document uh, with you. And this part we have the absolute. So I have a question. So, like, my first question was actually on the title, where you just you talked about the the fact that the title is quite important yeah. and should attract people. Mm -hmm. So, for this topic, can you give me an example of a title that could be a bad title? So, like, a, an example a, of a bad title for this. Okay. Uh, a, ba a bad title. Yeah. Not a, a bad. Don't, there's no bad title. Okay. There's so an unattractive title. title. An title. It could be, for instance, uh, you saying uh, study of uh, phenomena, phenomenal uh, of bundle conductor. Okay, and why is it bad? It's bad because... Why is it unattractive? It's unattractive because when you give a topic, the topic must be going straight to the point. I mean, when you study of phenomena, there is a lot of phenomena happening with uh, transmission line owing to wind vibration. There is a lot of vibration model. For instance, when I'm saying phenomenon... An example, like, can, can you tell me the title again? It says study of phenomenon. Yeah, a phenomenon of bundle, uh, oxidation of bundle conductor. Study of phenomenon of what? Bundle conductors. Okay, okay, continue now. The, then it, 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 it's unattractive because it's wide. You don't know which phenomena you'll be starting. You'll be studying. You don't know what is the method you're gonna be using because in my chat all day, there is the methodology. Expect the methodology. I explain what the limitation of my work because I'm saying I I alien vibration because there is beside alien vibration, uh, there is a galloping vibration, and there is a awake motion of bundle conductor. You understand? So in my this title, I give you the methodology. I give you my limitation. I give you which type of conductor, power line conductor I'm dealing with. Because there is single conductor and bundle conductor. So I draw my line. So it's clear and attractive because it's limited. It give you a limitation. It give you the, uh, the methodology and method. And it give you what is the range or what is the, 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 the category of, um, of vibration I'm dealing with? That is what. Secondly, we're going to the abstract, okay? As I was saying that, the, what the abstract, the abstract must give you the objective, the hypothetic, the methodology must draw the line of what you want to achieve. It must attract the reader to go to the next level because the title, yeah, it's good giving to next level we have i can read or i can tell you what is the and this is the the ukzn the invest of kwazulu not natal format they tell you to brief description of proposed project and as i told you most of the university they're gonna set the limit uh, words number of words you need to have like here is 350 so if it's more than 350 they can be they can reject your work so they are very harsh on that. And uh, as I told you that you must have, what is the application? What is the the the, um, the hypothesis and put For instance, I like this part of mine, okay? I like, I'll read, uh, I'll read, okay, let me, I'll read uh, uh, the second sentence, second sentence here. 
read this and you understand what I mean. The design and selection of spacer damper, as well as the application to bundle conductor, for instance, number and space, spacing over a span, it's quite often carried out empirically using some rel re re relatively simple rule of thumb. What does it mean? In uh, When we design power lines using bundle conductor, the methodology to do the optimization of uh, those bundle conductor is done empirically. So when it's done empirically, it's different, it's, it's, it's very difficult to draw the limitation. What I mean the limitation, for instance, there is bundle conductor we are, what are, uh, which are very long and which some are very so short. But when using empirical uh, methods, you're going to use the same method to do the optimization. That's how I attract readers with this sentence. I want to tell them that there is a problem with the current methods because the method of existing methodology is empirical. So now, another things I point out is that I emphasize is such a practice has served the industry fairly well. Most of the time, failure were observed time to time due to inadequate protection of bundle conductor from aeolian vibration. This is the second attraction, what well, I'm saying, that the existing methodology is not adequate because the failure always has occurred. Okay? And that's why we need a new. And as well as, I emphasize the second time saying, the available model, existing model, is purely um, I, I'm emphasizing that the model is uh, it it remain an academic research tool. What does it mean? Most of the time, when people are doing research, they are doing the model which only them can understand. Even if they are supervisor, they cannot understand their methodology or the approach they are using. So if, for instance, the company has to understand, they need to hire someone like us doing postdoc to understand what other students did in order to make it clear for them. And what we need, uh, now I start putting on, the, on my plate what I propose to do. Um, Daniel, can I ask a question? So from what you've been saying, from what I understand, the research gap you are trying to solve is based on the methodology. Not only the methodology. Okay. is based on uh, the methodology and the modeling. What, okay. what, what, what I mean, the observation. Because before you, 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 um, um, before you identify your variables, you need to observe. Okay. As I was saying in the uh, the, present, the main presentation, I say I told you that the research, um, a, a research, um, a scientific research got four main parts. The fir first part is the, uh, identify your variables. In order to identify your variables, you need to observe, and observation. That way, we start. My title is experimental and numerical study. The observation we do we we did it experimentally so we have uh, in our lab we put conductor we vibrate and on conductor we put some sensor in order to collect data those data is our observation that's why i was saying uh, uh that so now i was saying that now i put my what i can do i say this there is a pressing here this there's a pressing need for a practical yet realistic or semi-empirical design tool to access the behavior of performance of bundle conductor system. Okay? Then I emphasize saying the chief motivation of this research is therefore to develop experimental and numerical benchmark for the purpose of developing the practical design tool to be used by transmission line designer. Okay? The power, you know, now I emphasize in, in my methodology, which method 
I'll be developing. The power method and energy balance principle will be used in order to develop the experimental and numerical benchmark. Okay, the associate experimental work will be formed on 85 meters conductor. So now I define my text bench. And now I told you it's important. The second part in the format, uh, the format of research proposal is to have introduction after the abstract introduction and the research review. But here, as I told you, it's where I put the reference and explain the gap, existing gap. There is some paper I read, I read, and I put some reference. I explain what is the problem we have noticed so explicitly. Um, I explain, I give how the phenomena is working. And after that, I come and underline the objective of my work, what I'll be doing, what is the purpose, what is the objective to achieve while I'm developing my model, while I'm doing my work. It's very important. And then I came with the methodology. So when you do your proposal, the methodology, you just project the methodology you'll be using without too much details, but you give the big line, how you think you're going to be doing. For instance, I work in uh, um, in frequency domain, so I need to give the range of frequency. Why? Because I know aerial vibration starts from 5 to 150 hertz, but in lab, I didn't do 150 hertz because I have limitation uh, the, uh, the 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 output one's gonna be valuable for me. They are very small. So I had to draw those lines. I have to give what is important, which configuration I'll be using. It is very important. And I was saying, I was telling you that it's important to, um, to say what resources you have. And in my resources, since it was uh, an American company who approached me to do for them the project, so they said they're going to fund everything. I had to do the budgeting as well because I had to replace all the equipment in the lab. And um, I did my budget. I did my budget, what you need done, which uh, sample I'll be using. But like when I was doing my project, there is some company who donate uh, to me drums and drums of conductors. But we had the other company in Italia send us sample. But this is my budget. I had to draw a budget, project budget, budget per task. I give the acquisition system and so on, the total. And after that, this is the lab. Uh, the lab was like this. But we had to develop a lab with four bundle conductor. So uh, this is the setup of the lab. And we had to do it uh, like this. So we had to change a lot of equipment and after that i had to uh, give the table of which kind of instrument i'll be using uh, the number the type of instrument and most of the time they will ask you even to give a made a make which make is, is those equipment is very important to give that and to give some specification and after that the most important things i told you is the project timeline so this is the grand, uh, the grand chart I draw, and I give the main task. In the main task, the literature review, um, the task I'll be doing in the lab, I've been draw. I will write the paper, the publication, the first publication, second. But God help me, I, I wrote more than uh, eight publications. Wow. But the requirement for the university all over the world now is two publication minimum published and one uh, is a draft, it uh, is doable. But I didn't finish in 2015. Why? Because uh, we had problem, uh, problem. And as I told you, you need to put reference, which is important. As many reference you're going to have in your work, your work going to be good because reference give you, can I give you limitation of your work, but open your mind widely because research is about uh, not repeat what has been done, is to have guideline of what other did. For instance, when you want to develop a numerical model, you don't have data. So what you do, 
you start doing uh, numerical model based on the data of others you validate those numerical models then after that you can extend your your your, your model you did uh, the numerical model you did that is the same way so sometimes when we don't read a lot we have a problem you can repeat the same work people did and then after that you 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 spend your time for nothing because Sometimes they did their work and they already found the conclusion. And uh, this is, uh, I, I think this document is going to make available to you by Barbara. Uh, Barbara, do you have any question? Um, no, it was, it was really insightful. And I like to say um, thank you. So I'm going to share like a little bit of what I learned that for your research proposal, it's important to identify, to answer the question of the what, mm. the how, and the there's a lot and the why. Oh yeah. So like, um, so like for every research proposal you write, it's very important to answer this question. So this is just the cost aspect of it. So we're mm. actually going to have a workshop where we are going to um, review. We are going to review some um, some research proposals. So once you are done with um, this session, I would advise you go draft your own research proposal and it shouldn't be this long let's say like two or three pages should be fine and once you're done just leave it in a com just like leave a comment telling me that you're done and leave your email when we are ready for the workshop i'm going to reach out to you for you to send your document so that we could have a live review i hope you really enjoy the session and if you have any questions and um, leave it in the comment section and we'll be glad and happy um to help um if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, uh, it will mean a lot to me if you subscribe. Also share with your friends and your family who would like to study abroad just to check um, this out. I also advise everybody to write a research proposal, even if the investor is not requesting for it, because it also helps you to stand out. Mm -hmm. And it serves as an avenue for you to also learn, because once you're entering to grad school, at a, at a certain stage in your life, you are going to write a research proposal. And if you've done it before, you already have prior experience. So, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Kubewa, I want to say thank you very much. And I'm thank really grateful you. for honoring this session. So, before we call it a close, could you uh, give us your final words, some advice, like anything like you want to share with us? Advice um, when uh, we, uh, we advise everybody to become a researcher. Everybody's a researcher on his own. But the most important is when when you want to undertake your research, you need to find something that motivates you to become a researcher. A lot of people, they start research and um, they reach the middle, they abandon. I'm telling you from my experience, I was in a country where we, we, uh, we start research and uh, a lot of things happening, you have xenophobia and so on. And sometimes you want to abandon, but you have good motivation. You need to have support for each and everybody. I always tell people in research, there is no stupid question. All questions got a point. A stupid question to you can be a very important to me, a very important question to me. And there is this publication uh, I like. I saw someone wrote, uh, the stupidity um, help out you gonna help you out in research that is the most important things to know there is no greater researcher there is no bigger researcher everyone is a research on his own it depends how you're handling your research remember those big people you know in sciences they didn't come with the mother home with the degree of invention or patent or whatsoever or um uh, whatever price you know, a Nobel Prize, everything is the fun on earth. What When you want to do research, you need two things. You need to put your time observing what you want to research and you'll be good at. Imagine if, for instance, when your work is to just observe how the chicken can run. Every day you observe how a chicken can run. After two months, you'll be good at what you're going to be observing. You can conclude something. I always tell people, 
drinking water is difficult if you don't have hands. But there is nothing is simple in life. Everything is difficult. It depend. It's relative. So be motivated. We need a lot of researchers to make this world, this world better and better. Thank you very much for watching us. <laughs> have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Daniel. And have a, a great day. If you haven't yet subscribed, can you do so until our next session, our next workshop. Bye. And I'm rooting for you. Okay. Bye-bye.